Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Once again, it's been a little while since I've made a video, or at least any kind of a lengthy one. As always, I've been busy, but you probably don't really want to hear that. But one of the things that I've been busy with is this smart switch that I introduced a few months ago. This is the production prototype board, so it's a little different than the one you saw. Uh, if you watched the other video. If you didn't watch the other video, there'll be a link in the description so you can check it out. And this is what it's going to look like, or pretty close to what it's going to look like in the case. So, a few differences from last time. I did decide to go with Anderson power poles. I asked for some comments about the video, and the general consensus uh, seemed to be power poles. I also asked around in the local club and a few other folks besides the comments. But here it is. I'm kind of excited about it. I'm not going to go through all the details. This is a, a smart switch that provides overcurrent protection, overvoltage protection, undervoltage protection. You can control it remotely over a serial port. You can control it locally with some control wires, and it's got some status outputs for driving LEDs. It also, this board has LEDs on the board, which you can see through here. Um, I'll show you this working in a little bit. Anyway, one other feature that I've added, so this does remote control, local control, and in the software now, it has something called mobile mode. And in mobile mode, you can use this in your car. You can connect a switch up to it and a little control box. Again, I'll show you an example of that. I've been running this in my truck for eh, a couple of weeks now. And it provides what I think is a really useful feature, well, several useful features. So if you're using this in mobile mode in your vehicle, you plug your power source from the vehicle on the in port, you plug your radio or radios and other gear into the out port. And if you look at the ARRL handbook or uh, numerous articles in magazines about how to connect a mobile rig, you're gonna find that the common recommendation is you really want to run the power wires directly to the car battery and route them you know however you need to route them to get to where your radio is and there's multiple reasons for that uh, one of which is you're not going through the fuse box in the car and any other car wiring so it helps a little bit with minimizing any kind of noise you might get on the radio and also you can run good heavy gauge wires so that if you're running like a 100 watt mobile rig you don't get as much voltage drop. Problem with that is if you've got wires routed directly to the battery and you want to have your mobile setup designed so that when you turn the key off and leave the car everything automatically shuts off. So to do that now you've got to put a relay in between the battery and the rig in that cable somewhere and you need to find a source of an ignition wire that comes on when you have ignition or maybe ignition and accessories however you want to do it and then you got to wire that into the relay and you you get the picture what this does in mobile mode is it does the over and under voltage protection uh, as i described in the other video but in addition to that, there are two additional voltage trip points to turn it off when the engine's not running, essentially faking an ignition signal. So what this will do is if the voltage goes below 12.8, that's the default. You can use the serial port to set it to whatever you like. This will start a timer internally. And again, the default for that timer is 10 minutes. You can set that timer to be anything from one minute to 600 minutes or 10 hours. And what this will do then is at the end of that timeout period, it will shut off the output and it'll go into standby mode. In standby mode, the output's off, the little green status LED for power switch on will flash 
once a second to let you know it's in standby mode and then it'll just sit and wait and then when the voltage goes above 13.3 again you can set that to whatever you like it will then turn back on so when you start the car and or truck or whatever it is you're driving and the alternator kicks in and starts charging the battery this will power the rig back up the other piece that you can do with that is if the timer times out and you still want to have your rig on if you wire a switch in that you can access up at your somewhere near your driver's station you can flip the enable switch off and back on and that will restart the timer with whatever timeout period you've picked so you can always get the radios to come back on if you want them on without the engine running and then they will come on automatically when you start the car as i said i've been running this in my truck for a couple of weeks so let me show you that and you can see how it's been working. Well, we'll start here in the back of the truck and this is my radio installation with the tuner on the top. Some of you have probably seen this before. This is a piece of ground wire that's just dangling out. And here is the smart power switch. It's a little bit of a temporary cable. I just used a piece of ethernet cable for my connection to the front. I'll show you that in a minute. And I've just got power going into the power switch and power going out to the radio. Let's take a look at what it looks like up in the driver's compartment. All right, this is the little sort of temporary switch box that I put in the center console. This is the enable switch. This is the status LED. We'll talk about the flashing in a second. And this is the fault LED. So you see the status LED is flashing, and that's because my vehicle's been off for more than 10 minutes. And there's the radio, and you can see that's off. So let's put the keys in, and we're going to start it. And I'll show you actually the light down here, then we'll go up to the radio. So we're going to give it a start. And this is... Now it finally came on, and you will see my radio is powering up. And the reason that the flashing lasted a while is I discovered something about my truck because I thought maybe something was wrong with my switch. You see now my battery voltage is up, and this doesn't read very precisely. It says 13 volts. It's actually 13 point something, probably 13.8. Uh, it only reads to the nearest volt, so if it gets over 14, it'll say 14. But what I discovered is when I start this truck, if I leave that battery display on the screen, it says like 12 or 11 volts when I start the truck for a good like 10 to 15 seconds. So there's some delay before the truck actually engages the alternator or enables the alternator. And I'm just learning about that. So I found that my little switch is working exactly the way it's supposed to. Once the voltage actually goes above 13 and a half volts, then the switch powers up the radio. And there you have it. Now let's take a look at what happens when we turn it off. So we've turned it off, and you see it's still on. The radio is still on. And it will stay on like this for 10 minutes. So I'm not going to bore you with watching a green light glow steadily for 10 minutes. So let's come back in about 9 minutes and 45 seconds or so, and we'll see what happens. All right, we're coming up on 10 minutes since I turned off the truck. And I also took my little temporary switch box and moved it up here, up on top of the console or dashboard. 
next to the radio. It's not mounted or anything, it's just sitting there, but that way you can see the radio and the switch box at the same time. And there we go. It's timed out, and now you see it's gone to standby mode, which is indicated by the flashing, and it's powered off the radio. And in this mode, it's drawing just about seven milliamps average from the truck battery, so it can sit like this for months, and probably the computers in the truck are gonna kill the battery before this does. And if you want to turn the radio on without starting the truck, if we just turn off the switch, turn it back on, that powers it back up. Now, because we are below 12.8 volts, the timer will start almost immediately, so this will stay on for another 10 minutes, and then it'll shut off again. As I mentioned inside, the timer on this you can set anywhere from one minute to 600 minutes. So you can have it stay on for a minute, or you can have it stay on for 10 hours. That depends on what your use case is and what you need. But there you have it. That's how I've been using this in mobile mode. I've had this installed in here in a couple of weeks and it's been working pretty well so far. That's how I've been using this for the last couple of weeks. I really think mobile mode is something that at least some people are gonna find handy and getting all the protection as well. The main reason that I had originally designed this was actually to make a remote controllable switch that was compatible with the device control network. Uh, that's something from George KJ6VU. He's one of the hosts on the ham radio workbench and he has uh, a bunch of different boards and accessories that are part of a station controller system. You can find that on his Pactena website. I'll have links to all this in the description. And check out Ham Radio Workbench. It's a great podcast. I enjoy listening to it. You need to have a long time, like a big lawn to mow, or you need to be on a road trip because it is kind of a long podcast, but it's a lot of fun. They have some cool guests, and they talk about some really interesting topics. Anyway, I hope you find this one interesting, and I have some other interesting things coming up here. Some should be a few more videos coming out a little more quickly here in the next uh, month or so, because I've got uh, something else new that um, has come into the shack, and I'll talk about that in the next one. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.